What's going on everybody? Welcome to the channel and the video review of the Chengfei Toys CF920. The large foldable RC quadcopter. This one has Wi-Fi FPV with the phone app control as well. Altitude hold, one key return, headless mode. So let's go ahead and open up this baby and check it out. All right, guys, we got everything out of the box. Here is the quadcopter. It is a fairly large foldable quadcopter, like I said. It is pretty interesting in design how it folds out. Uh, it just flaps down. All of the arms flap down, and you can extend it. There's a little clasp that you lock in the arm so it doesn't fold back down. So that is how you unfold the arms, all four of them. The one in the back doesn't fold out that much. It just kind of hangs down a little bit. So that is the amount that it folds. And it also has that clasp. So you lock it in place. And it's a pretty nice little lock. It holds it in place pretty good. So there you have it, guys. There is the quadcopter here. Like I said, it's a pretty large size quadcopter here. And first thing you see is the on and off button right on the top. And there's a few LED lights. I'm pretty sure that does indicate the level of the battery. LED lights right on the arms itself, right on the top. And they do go all the way right through to the bottom. So that is fantastic. Now, taking a look at the bottom of the quadcopter, there's the Wi-Fi antenna. This is a Wi-Fi app controlled unit as well. And the app uh, you want to download in the app store is called the JAD-UFO app. And I've used that app before on a different quadcopter. So they are using another app that is kind of universal. As you can see, it has the gears exposed right through this little cover. So that is fantastic. All you gotta do is remove three screws and you can take off this little cover to access the gears in case you got some dirt stuck in there and we have the battery bay in the back of the quadcopter and here is the battery it is a jst connected battery here as you can see but you charge it up through this balance port or the balance plug um, what i did was i just char charged it up with the jst connector on my hobby gray charger and it took uh about 20 minutes or so to charge it up fully so that was good i believe this battery here it is, it is unmarked it doesn't tell you anything but it is a 7.4 volt 850 milliamp size battery supposed to give you a runtime of around eight to nine minutes guys so that is pretty decent uh the props are screwed on right here just like uh the tarantula type uh deal here and the motors are the um not the round type motors it does have the flat sides to it but what it looks like is it's slightly smaller than the tarantula motors i'm not sure about that i have to take it out and compare the two but uh it looks right around that same size so we might have a pretty good amount of power on this one now, looking in the front of the quadcopter here, there is the uh, camera right up in the front, and it is a module. So you are able to take this camera right out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I tried it out last night, but you have to kind of remove this Wi-Fi antenna because this is the spot where you want to push out, and I didn't want to damage the antenna. So what I'm going to do is slide the antenna out of its holder right there so I can put my thumb right there there's a little push button knob right here to release the module and you can release the module and it comes right out okay so I was taking a look at this module last night and I noticed that uh, there's the connector right there I noticed there's a little slit right on the top and as I look in that slit it could be a spot for the micro SD card but this one however does not have a DVR it has the circuitry for the Wi-Fi FPV in its place so there's no DVR in there but uh, I'm pretty sure they will offer a camera version only without the Wi-Fi FPV inside so they're probably gonna have a DVR right there so if you get the camera only version uh, I'm sure you will be able to record your video and your photo 
through that micro SD card. It is a pretty nice looking little module. So there you go guys. So I'm going to go ahead and slide that back in and push it back in place. Very easy to do. Just get it lined up and just push it right in and you are good to go and it won't slide out because it locks in place so that is nice it's a pretty nice looking car cutter like i said pretty big unit so i can't wait until uh i test it out i haven't tested it out yet i did hover in the house to see whether or not it works or not so there's a um, couple of um slits right here for the landing legs and let's go ahead and check out the landing legs Okay, so they give you these landing legs here, and it does have a little hole there to screw in as well. But I tried it out last night. Let's see, this one goes in this way. So I tried it out last night, and it goes in there and stays in there pretty good. So there you go. Oops, you got to push it in a little bit better than what I just done. There you go. Nope. Did I get that on the wrong side? Yeah, wrong side. It only goes on one side, guys. So there you go. It clicks into place, and it's on there. It's clicked on. So there's that little hole in the middle. Uh, you can go ahead and screw it on to further secure the landing legs. Okay? But I found that it works fantastic just without any screws. So I'm just going to leave it without the screws, guys, so I can put it back in the box right after I fly it. So there you go. There's the landing legs. And it also comes with these prop guards as well. And they're the snap-in type as well. So let me go ahead and show you one of them, how to go about installing it. So there's this little uh, protrusion out here. And the bottom part of the prop guards uh, match up to that protrusion. And all you do is kind of push it down. And it is on there. So when you want to take it off, all you got to do is um, just push that little knob right there and it comes right off so easy on off okay so for beginners I would recommend that you do put the prop guards on because this is a pretty big quadcopter I'm gonna be flying out here to test it out out in the field so I'm just gonna leave the prop guards off for now anyways uh, that is it for the quadcopter for now and there's the battery let's take a look at the remote control here now the remote control comes just like this, folded down just like that. Kind of looks like the DJI style remote control and the phone clip looks just like it as well. So you got these two little um, levers that you fold down just like the DJI type and you got that little button right here and it springs up and then you can go ahead and tighten it down. So you can also use a pretty big size phone here. I don't think this will hold an iPad. It is not wide enough, but you are able to put your big size uh, phablet type phones right here. And it fits my iPhone 6 Plus without a problem. So that is fantastic. Got this little foam pad on the back and little foam pieces right here glued on. So that works out really, really nice. So let's look at the functions of the remote control here. There's a left shoulder button. Now this button is the speed changing button. And there's a right shoulder button. This one does flips. There's a couple of rotating knobs here, but those are just fake uh, buttons and knobs. Uh, this one here is the video button. Press it to take the video. And this button here is the camera button. You press it to take photos. Uh, but uh, this unit is a Wi-Fi uh, unit, so we are going to take photos and videos via the Wi-Fi phone app. So these guys are nullified on this model here. Throttle and the pitch and roll, very nice, very nice. Feels really, really nice. It's got a pretty hefty size too, and got those little jaggedy edges, so it is very, very nice, guys. Really, really nice. Uh, trim buttons here and trim buttons here. And there's some alphabetical buttons, A, B. That's the power, that says H on it, and that one is a C, and that one kind of looks like a D. Uh, the letter A button. Now, this one is a little confusing. 
Uh, it doesn't tell you much in the instruction manual. Uh, it says, though, however, it is a fast rotation. So I'm not quite sure what that is. We already have the rotational button here, which is the flip button. So I'm thinking maybe this one makes it flip even faster. So we'll check that out, uh, see how, uh, what kind of function it does. So the B button here is the light button. So you press it to turn the LED lights on and off. So that is nice. This is the power button. Short press it to turn it on, long press it to turn it off. Now this H button here is the one key to take off and one key to land button. So we'll check that out. The C button here is the headless mode button and the D button here is the one key to return. Button. So that is all familiar to us. So both sticks to the bottom and to the right will calibrate the gyros of this quadcopter. Okay, so that is the remote control. And I've already shown you the prop guards. Uh, they give you also two additional props. And these props uh, have that little screw on. Okay, and they also give you a bag of goodies. We got the USB charge cable. We have a nice uh, uh, screwdriver, and this one is really nice. Mine, um, I have a similar one like this from the Tarantula, and I still use it. So it is a really nice um, screwdriver, and they also give you a little bag of screws as well. And here it is the addendum to the instruction manual. And this one shows you all of the uh, QR codes to download the app from the App Store. And again, the name of the uh, app is called the JAD UFO app. And this kind of shows you uh, how to use it. So it is very self-explanatory when, once you get into the app and you can check that out. And also give, also comes with this instruction manual as well. So let's go ahead and take this big folding quadcopter, the CF920 for a test run. All right, we are just about ready to go with the CF920. I got my phone attached to the phone clip. And I did have to use those little levers. If I did it on the bottom, my phone was too small for this clip. So you are able to put a pretty big size um, tablet. Maybe a tablet could fit on here. All right, so let's go ahead and power this baby on, holding the button down. And you see that all of the lights are flashing. We got red LED lights in the back, green in the front, and blue lights indicating the on and the three little LED lights. So let's go ahead and turn this baby on here the remote control and you got blue lights flashing on those lettered buttons here so up and down we are bound okay let's first of all take the lights off by pressing the B button and all of the lights have turned off right on all right so let's go and turn on the phone and get connected to the Wi-Fi network and we are connected with the F H8610 UFO Wi-Fi network and JAD UFO app and hopefully it is visible here let me go ahead and turn up the display brightness okay so hitting that play we are in and nice we do have FPV so look, first things first let's go ahead and take some photos so let me go ahead and lift it up and face it forward and the camera angle is directly straight guys so we got horizon looking straight ahead there saved successfully it says where's the uh, shutter do i have the mute on again yep okay so take a photo of the buildings no shutter sound just says saved successfully Okay, car again. And the neighborhood to the right. The school to the right. And one more to the front. Okay, so now we have taken some photos. We'll hit that video and it turned yellow and the counter is counting down right below it all right so let's put our phone back in here uh, the phone 
clip uh, is kind of a little bit on the flimsy side, guys. So it kind of shakes a little bit because of that lengthy little holder. Uh, so be careful. I try to tighten that screw to hold it in place like so. Uh, it, I, my screwdriver that they provide you with wasn't big enough to make it tighter. I needed a little bit bigger screwdriver. I'm just going to leave it just the way it is, just like that. And I'm able to see. So let's go ahead and take off. But first, let's uh, calibrate the gyros. Both sticks to the bottom and to the right. And the lights are blinking. And they have turned off. So I'm assuming that is it so arming the motors and disarming the motors with this button or one key to take off and land so let's see what it does oh it takes off automatically guys so it is a true one key to take off and that is the default altitude Kind of sounds like the tarantula. It's making kind of a vibration noise. As if... Okay. Okay, that is the breeze. But I hear this noise. Yeah, I guess it's okay. Slightly kind of a vibratory noise. Not a solid, steady sound. But maybe it is just breaking in the motors. And I haven't touched the throttle yet. We are slowly going down and down in altitude. So uh, let me hit that throttle, bring it back up. Okay, so far so good looks like. Okay, first things first. Let's see what this fast rotation does. Oh, look at that. It just yaws. Okay, it's a one button yaw control. Okay, so this is speed number one and I'm full pitching it. It is able to make its way back and fight the tiny breeze that we got here. And this is going with the breeze. So kind of get the idea of the speed this thing has. Let's go to speed number two. Okay, a lot better. Okay, it's got pretty good speed in speed number two. Nice. Speed number three. Okay, let's test out speed number three. Yep. It's got pretty good speed. With a little bit of throttle. Yep. It's pretty decent. Yep. Very nice. Very nice. All right, let's send it up a little bit and take a little video. Go to speed number one so I can pan slowly. It's got about 100 meter control distance and the Wi-Fi control distance is around 70 meters. Okay, so far so good. Not bad at all. 
Whoa, and speed number three, the yaw is pretty fast. Okay, I went to speed number one to take the video and went back up to speed number three to bring it back down. All right, let's do a flip, right side flip. Okay, forward flip, pretty good. I'm doing a one-handed flip here. I, I'm not assisting it with the throttle. Pretty good. Not bad flips for a big quad. So there you go. There's the flips. Nice. Let's check out the headless. Okay. I am in headless. Okay. It's got the headless bearing all messed up here. I'm pushing it and it's coming back towards me. Let me get out of the headless first and... Let's see if we can get this um, headless mode situated a little bit better by recalibrating. Maybe that super fast yaw messed it up. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, bring it right above my landing pad here. And we're going to hit that one key to land. Oops, I'm going to miss the landing pad. <laughs> okay, so let's bring it back up over here to the table here. I'm going to do is I'm going to hit that video icon to turn off the video taking so we have the segment already saved. Okay, so both sticks to the bottom and to the right. Okay, that has calibrated it. Now let's check it out one more time. One key to take off. Okay, now headless mode. Okay, let me bring it back. Yeah, now the headless mode is in the correct orientation. I'm going to the right. Going to the left and pulling it back towards me and it's coming back towards me. Okay. Man, just goes. Okay, I was in speed number three. That's why it's rotating so fast. Okay, so let me go to speed number two and hit the one key to return. Let me go to speed number three. <laughs> okay, redirecting it with the pitch. You are out of the one key return. And let me try that again. One key return. And it should be coming back towards me. Hit the one key to return button. And it does not turn it off. So you have to redirect it with the pitch and the roll stick in order to get out of the one key to return. Okay, so pretty nice so far, guys. A very nice quad, I would say. Okay, we are doing something different here. It feels like I'm in headless mode still. So let me hit that button again. Yeah, I was in headless mode. Okay, let me see one key to return. All right, and it's returning. I have redirected it. No, I'm not in headless mode. I'm in the regular mode. Well, that was kind of funky. Okay, so we have tested just about everything here. So let's go for a little cruise. And see if we can run out the battery. It kind of stopped the responding right there. Okay, so take a note of that. I think it's got to do with the Wi-Fi phone app and the fact that they are using the same frequency, the 2.4 gigahertz. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it down for a landing since I have enough battery and we tested it everything. Hitting that one key to land and this time I am almost on top of the landing pad. All right. Okay, I think we have a little bit of battery life left after that little initial run. So I'm going to go ahead and try and see if I can fly it with the Wi-Fi phone app. So let's go ahead and okay, turn it on. Go into the settings into the Wi-Fi and let's connect with the FH8610 UFO network. I am connected hitting that JAD app and hitting play and we got Wi-Fi connection. Now this thing has altitude hold, it has a gyro and on and off of course the camera, the video, and the folder, and 30% speed, 60 and 100. Okay, let me hit that on and off. Now, I also have the flight planner and the flip button that appeared, okay? So let me hit that altitude hold, 
and check that out the lights went solid now we are connected I don't think I have a light on and off switch on here we also have the emergency stop and the up arrow and the down arrow that just appeared okay so let's go ahead and see if we can still take a video while we use the phone app I, I can't turn the lights on and off guys let me hit the settings this one just has the reverse the 3d the headless mode and the gyro let me hit that gyro and check that out calibration nice okay let me get out and hit that one key to take off yep one key to take off on the phone app as well and that is the altitude with the phone app so let's see we are in speed number three, which is the 100 percent. And we are controlling it pretty good. It is a little bit slow to respond. And the pitch is not that deep that is the full pitch on 100 percent okay so it is a little bit more docile in the controls with the wi-fi phone app so let's go ahead and check out the gyro mode and there you go guys full tilt on the g mode okay so that is the gyro mode it is not the greatest So it's a lot less docile in the Wi-Fi phone app than on the hard remote, okay? So let me get out of the gyro mode and let me hit that flight planner. And let me draw a line forward, uh, slightly diagonal. Whoa, it goes for a while. So be careful with that. Don't draw a line too much, okay? So I drew a line to, a very short line to counteract that line that I drew earlier okay so let's go ahead and push it forward just a little bit the lights are still solid so we're good wow it goes for a long distance with just a small line I drew a circle right now and the circle that it makes is very small though okay drawing a line backwards check that out it keeps coming wow check that out okay drawing a line forward just a little line and look at that it goes for a while okay so drawing a line back towards me and it is coming back don't drop in altitude let me get out of the flight planner and let me bring it in over here because what I just saw was something that just kind of surprised me I saw a microphone icon so let's go ahead and bring it down for a landing right here yeah I'm completely off all right, what we are going to do is take a look at the voice control. It has a microphone. That means it has voice control. So let me go ahead and study up on what the voice control is. Okay. Forward. Forward, back off, left side, right side, take off and landing. Okay. I am in voice control mode right now. Take off. Forward. Backward. 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 No, it's not working very well. So I'm going to see if I can bring it back with the virtual sticks. While in the voice uh, control mode, your pitch and roll stick does work as well. So you are able to safely bring it back just in case left side right side okay the voice control works okay it just went down all right i think the battery is on the low so we did pretty good so far yeah it is blinking now so that is the lvc and uh, we went beyond the lvc i believe and it just came down all right, so that is the flight with the CF920 and the voice uh, control worked as well. So that's pretty good. So let's go ahead and turn it off. Turn off my video. So hopefully I got all that and turn off the power. There we go. 
All right, just got done flying the CF920, the large Wi-Fi app-controlled quadcopter, and it did pretty good. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I was able to fly it with the Wi-Fi phone app control with the same charge, single charge, so it was a pretty decent amount of flight time, and it did pretty good with the Wi-Fi phone app. It was a little bit more docile in the phone app than on the hard remote, so this quadcopter does really, really nice with the hard remote, so that is fantastic. Uh, this fast yaw spin with this press of the A button, uh, that was pretty cool. Maybe at night when the lights are on and uh, it is dark out when you press this uh, it will spin and if you do that with headless mode you are able to spin like a UFO and control it uh, with the headless mode so that is pretty cool that's just like uh, holding on the yaw to the left or to the right so I'm not sure if that is a really necessary functionality but it is there for you to enjoy so there you have it guys the CF920 the large foldable RC quadcopter pretty decent so thank you very much for tuning in and watching have a great day and we'll see you again next time